Resourceful Designer, episode 158. Time for tomfoolery. Welcome to the Resourceful Designer podcast, offering solutions to streamline your graphic and web design business so you can get back to designing. And now, your host, his favorite Star Wars character is Jar Jar Binks. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is the April Fool's episode, isn't it? I hope. Here's Mark Dickout. That's right, Wayne. Today, the day this episode is released, is April Fool's Day. The one day of the year where tomfoolery, shenanigans, and levity abound. It's a day to put all seriousness aside and let the practical joker in you out. Now, I had started work on a completely different episode for this week before I realized what day this would be coming out on. But once I realized it was going to be April 1st, I decided to put that one off and I'll save it for next week and have a bit of fun with this one. Now, I did think of maybe trying to pull one over on you and start the episode saying something like, I've decided to end the podcast with this episode and it'll be my last one. But then I thought about it and I thought, what if someone's listening to this for the very first time? If you are, thank you very much for tuning in. This is not a typical episode, as you probably figured that out already, but I do appreciate you tuning in. But I thought, what if somebody tuned in, heard me say this was going to be the very last episode, took me seriously, and then just stopped listening? Or what if a regular listener took me seriously and unsubscribed from the podcast because of it? Not to mention, since my podcast is mostly evergreen episodes, meaning that it doesn't matter when you listen to them, the, the content is still good, someone may be listening to this episode later in the month, later in the year, or, or it could even be years from now that they're tuning in to listen, when it isn't anywhere near April Fool's Day, so they wouldn't get it. So instead of trying to pull a joke on you, I decided that I would use this episode to share some of the practical jokes that I've been part of over the years. So there won't be any what have I been up to, nor will there be any resource or question of the week in this episode, but they will be back next week. So I'm sorry if you've tuned in for some advice on your design business, you probably won't get much out of this episode. However, if you're looking for something to maybe liven up your day, then keep listening and I'll see what I can do. Now, I'm a big proponent of working from home. I cannot imagine going back to office life working for someone else. But with all the perks of being self-employed, one of the drawbacks is not having coworkers to have conversations with or to share ideas with or to pull practical jokes on. And I have to say, that is one thing that I miss since leaving the print shop. Yeah, pulling practical jokes on my wife and my kids is fun, although my kids don't live at home anymore, they're away at school. But it's not the same as pulling a good practical joke on an unsuspecting coworker in the middle of a busy workday. So while I reminisce, I thought I'd share some of the things that I've pulled off on my unsuspecting co-workers in years past. Now, I did pull off some of the typical jokes that you hear of everywhere, such as unscrewing the top on the salt shaker so that when they go to put salt on something, it just pours out, as well as replacing the sugar next to the coffee maker with salt. I've done that before. I've also done the saran wrap on the toilet seat which I have to say worked amazingly well, but it did backfire since I'm the one that ended up having to clean up the mess, which wasn't the fun I initially intended. And speaking of bathrooms, at the print shop in the press room, there was a bathroom there that was kind of in the middle of the room, so it had no windows or anything. And we could control the lights through a circuit breaker because for some reason the bathroom had its own dedicated breaker on the circuit panel. So it was always fun when somebody, and we would know, somebody would go, they'd grab a magazine or something and go into the bathroom. And if you're bringing a magazine into the bathroom, you pretty well know what the person's up to. So we'd give them a minute or two and then trip the breaker and all the lights would go off in there and they would be left pitch black because there was absolutely no lights in there when the lights went out. So of course, we pulled that on on many people throughout the year. That wasn't just an April Fool's thing. That was just kind of a joke that we would pull on people, especially if they were kind of obvious, like go rummage through some magazines and then pick them up and go walk into the bathroom and all that. It's like, oh, they're going to be in there a while. Let's go trip the lights on them. But those are all the, the typical ones that you hear all over the place. But some of the stuff that I pulled off in the design department, I, I mean, they ranged from minor innocent things to some that I have to say, I'll, I'll save it towards the end there. Some really good ones that I'm really proud of myself. 
So some of the, the pretty simple ones are turning the brightness down on the monitor. This is the days, you got to remember, this was going back 15 years ago when I worked there or, or longer. I started there almost 30 years ago. So this is the days when monitors and computers were two separate things. It's not like the IMAX or the computers today where it's all built in. And these monitors sometimes would have a switch on the back or a little knob on the back or a little wheel underneath the front of the, the monitor where you can adjust the brightness on them. And if you turned it all the way down, it looked like the computer monitor was off. So I would do that sometimes just to turn the brightness down on somebody's monitor. And then maybe they'd get back for lunch or, or from at the front counter seeing a client. They'd come back, think their computer had gone to sleep. So they'd press the space bar or some keys on the keyboard or tap the mouse or something. And then they'd wait and it, nothing would happen. So they'd think, oh, well, that's weird. The monitor's off. So they'd press the power button on the monitor, not realizing the monitor was on. Even though the, the red or green LED, depending on the monitor, was on, they would turn it off. And then when they would realize, oh, now it's off, they'd turn it back on and it was still not working. And usually it took them a second or two to realize the brightness was down. So that was a little innocent prank that we'd pull. And again, this wasn't necessarily just April Fool's Day. It was just something we'd do every once in a while. Just like back in those days, computer mice were wired and not only wired, but they weren't laser or optical. They had an actual trackball in the mouse. You old timers out there will remember when mice had trackballs in them. I, what I like used to like doing, especially if somebody was at their computer because they were least suspecting then, is they would be at their computer. Maybe they get a phone call and they'd kind of turn their back towards me. And if they weren't looking, I would you know slowly reach over, grab their mouse unscrew the bottom plate, take the ball out, put the bottom plate back, and then put their mouse back. And then they'd hang up the phone and they'd go back and start working and realize their mouse is not working. Now, sometimes they would pick it up, look underneath it, and notice right away that the ball was missing. And then, of course, look to me because when something like that happened, Mark was usually the culprit, so they would automatically look to me. But every once in a while, they wouldn't think to look, or sometimes they'd even turn the mouse upside down, look at it, and not even realize that the ball was missing. They were looking to see if there was something caught under the mouse or whatever. And then they start doing all sorts of stuff. They, they even go so far as restarting their computer to get it to work. And then eventually they'd figure it out, and I'd give them back the ball, and everything would be great and back to normal again. Now, one that I like to do from time to time, and again, not necessarily on April Fool's, but just practical jokes from time to time is go into somebody's system preferences and swap the left and right mouse button. And that would really mess some people up. They'd go through and every time they'd click the button, it's, uh, if you know, sometimes when you click the right mouse button, normally contextual menu will open up. Well, when you swap the two, that happens every time the right button. So they'd be trying to click on stuff. And every time they'd click, a little menu would pop down from wherever their mouse was. And it would drive them nuts until they realized what was happening. Or I'd go into the preference menu and change the, the speed on the tracking or the scrolling. Uh, the tracking was always fun. If you put it super fast, then it didn't matter how slow you'd start moving your mouse and your mouse would shoot to the other side of the monitor super quick. And it was really hard to control things. So it was always fun to see somebody with that. And then especially when they're trying to get into system preferences and click on things because it was harder to control the mouse if just moving it a hair on your desktop would shoot the cursor a few inches or a few centimeters across the screen. So that was always fun to do. Now, I remember one time, we the way our design department was set up is we had two areas and each area had two computers. In my area, the computers were far enough apart but in the other area, the computers were kind of right next to each other. Each designer had a lot of desk space, but the computers themselves were practically next to each other. So there was one time, and again, this is when the mice were wired. I went in behind the computer and I swapped so that the, computer, the, the right-hand computer's mouse controlled the left computer and the left computer's mouse controlled the right. So when the people sat down and started moving their mouse, they're looking at their screen and nothing's happening. But then the person on the other computer that was maybe typing something all of a sudden looks up and sees the cursor or a mouse going all over their screen, clicking on things and that. So anyways, that was always fun. Now, there was one thing I used to love. There was one guy there, great guy. He was a two-finger typer. And he was somebody, he had to look at the keyboard. He was really fast, but he would type with two fingers. He would look at the keyboard and he would type away. Well, what I'd do is I'd go in and I'd swap some of the computer, uh, the keyboard keys and I wouldn't do a lot of changes. It would be little things like maybe changing the R and the T, which are right next to each other, or the I and the O, or like sometimes it would just be two keys or four keys on the keyboard. I'd move them around. And of course, he's looking and he's typing. And even though he knows where the keys are, because he's been doing this long enough, 
he's one of these people that has to look at the keys. So when he looks and he thinks he's going to hit the R, but he sees the T, he would swap it. And he was getting frustrated because all these things, and he couldn't figure out why he was having trouble typing. And it was all because I had actually pried the keys off his keyboard and swapped them around. Now, I remember doing this to one person. There was one designer there where I undid the entire keyboard and put the keys back in a completely random order. And when she got to her computer and she sat down, of course, she didn't need them, but she looks and her keys are like all like number keys, letter keys, everything out of sequence. And it took a while for her to get them back. She had to pry everything out and then get another keyboard because, of course, it's one of those things, you know where the keys are, but when you actually sit there and look and think about it, you can't really remember, okay, was that key or is this one to the left? Is there another key before that one, especially around the edges of the keyboard? So that was a lot of fun, but I love doing it with just swapping a couple of keys, especially the people that have to look at their keyboards. I don't look at my keyboard when I type. I actually had typing class back in the day in high school. We actually had typing class on typewriters to teach us how to type. So, and those didn't have anything printed on the key. So there was no sense looking at the the typewriter because they were blank. So I learned how to type without looking. But to anybody that does look at the keyboard and especially the two finger, the people that just use their index finger, It is so much fun. Just pry the keyboard. You can do that with today's keyboards too. Just pry the keys off and move them around and see the havoc that causes. It's hilarious. Now, there is another thing I used to to like to do is at the print shop, we had a phone system and I think there was six lines available so that uh, whenever somebody called, there was always, you were, you know, you were either on line one, two, three, four, five, or six. What I would do is I would put all of the lines, like pick them up, put it on hold, pick the next one up, put it on hold. So basically all the lines are on hold, which means nobody can actually call the shop because all the lines are on hold. But then I would go to somebody and say, oh, there's a phone call for you on, uh, I can't remember what line it is, whichever one's on hold, it's yours. And then I would leave. And then they would come back and they would see all six lines on hold and they would be sitting there. Of course, there's no phone call for them. But they would be sitting there and wondering, okay, which line do I pick up? And sometimes they'd be reluctant because, you know, somebody else might be on hold. Anyways, it was always funny to see them go through it. And then, of course, once they pick up one line and they realize nobody's there, another one, nobody's there, then they'd know, oh, okay, Mark's pulling a joke on me. But they'd have to go through each line and clear them and double check to make sure nobody was there. Now, I do remember one April 1st, and this wasn't a practical joke I, I pulled on a coworker. I actually did this on the competition. And I was bored one day, so I called up a competing print shop and pretended to be somebody else and just asked them for a quote. And I gave them detailed information on what I needed. It was a booklet, I forget, like 36 pages, color cover, I wanted black on the inside. Uh, Anyway, saddle stitched. And I gave them all the information, everything they needed to come up with a quote, and then gave them a fake email address to send it to. Now, I know in hindsight, that was a little mean to do, But I remember at the time there was some article that had come out and the owner of that print shop, who was somebody that I I knew from before, I actually knew him from my college days, it was one of my college professors had bought the shop and he had been quoted saying something and it had basically put our print shop in bad favor because of what he had said. So it was kind of a little bit of retaliatory, but it was an April Fool's and I did that and I never know, I I have no idea what happened afterwards. They, I gave him a fake email address, so I never got a quote and I don't know what happened or if they ever went through or how much work was involved in the quote, but I remember doing that. Okay, now some of the, the better practical jokes that I pulled on my design compatriots, if you will. One of my favorite tools for, for jokes is Photoshop. When you combine Photoshop with the ability to take screen captures, there is all sorts of things you can do. Some of them, just for fun, is somebody, you have a desktop image. Everybody has some sort of desktop image. I mean, you can be really boring and just have a color in the background. No offense, but I've always had a, a, an image in the back. But what I would do is go on somebody's computer, and that image file can always be found somewhere on the computer. I would find that image file, open it in Photoshop, rotate it 180 degrees so it was upside down, and then go reinstall it as their desktop background. So when they'd go to their computer, their background was upside down and throw them off. And of course, if you got somebody, there was a couple of designers that were really good designers, but they weren't very computer savvy. You got to think, this is back in the, the 90s and early 2000s. And they weren't, they knew how to use the software, but they didn't really understand the whole computer operating system as much as I did. So changing the desktop background to, to them, it's, it's not as easy as it is now where you just right click on the background and change the image. Back then you had to go through system preferences and all sorts of stuff. And anyway, so it was quite the ordeal. So when they'd get back to their computer and the image was upside down, it would really throw them for a loop. 
Now that was just the start of some of the, the really good pranks that I, I played with this. Oh, before I go on, there's one that I'm forgetting about. And this, it, it doesn't have to do with one of my coworkers. This is one of a, a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine. He worked at a different company. And on an April Fool's one day, myself and another buddy of ours, we decided to play a prank on him. And we would communicate throughout the day all the time. We'd just send emails back and forth to each other. And we did this on a regular basis. But what I started doing was every email I sent to him, I would immediately, I would send him an email, then I would immediately go and say, send this email again and send it. So he, he would get duplicate emails. And then I contacted my other buddy and says, you do the same thing. So he started sending him emails. And these are just innocent, like, you know, what are you planning for the weekend? And then he would get a second one. What are you planning for the weekend? And then he would reply back and says, oh, that's really weird. I got two copies of your email. And then I would reply back, oh, really? That's strange. And then I would send that one again, a duplicate again. And the same thing with the other buddy. He would be having a conversation with him doing the same thing. Now, what my friend, the one we were pulling this joke on, what he didn't know is we had the email through, uh, he had CC'd us on an email that he had sent uh, a few weeks prior. And he had CC'd us with the email of his IT contact, the person in charge of their computer systems, who um, my friend works at one office and the main head office is in a different city. But he had CC'd us that person. And my other buddy, the one, the one that was co conspiring with me, we had emailed the IT person and see if he would get in on the problem. So as we were going back and forth, sending du- double emails, he was saying, well, there's something wrong with my system. I'm getting multiple emails. So he contacted his IT person and his IT person sent him back an email and says, oh, that's strange. Let me look into it. And then sent him a duplicate of that. So we went on for the entire day sending him multiple emails every time we would send him something. And he thought there was something wrong with his system. Anyways, to this day, this happened, oh, I'm say 20 years ago. To this day, we still have a laugh about that because he had no clue. He thought something, he thought he had a virus. He thought he was compromised somehow. And even some other people, the IT guy took it even further that we didn't know and had the, like, the president of the company send duplicate emails to this guy. And he had other people within the organization sending him duplicate emails as well. So he was convinced there was something wrong with his system. Anyways, we, as I said, we still laugh about that one to this day. But now back to the print shop. The upside down screen thing was the first of the Photoshop screens that I did. And they, they got better and better. I would do all sorts of stuff. But the one that I was really proud of, still not my best. I'll get to that in a bit. But the one I was really proud of was not just changing the background, but taking a screenshot of somebody's desktop. Now, you've heard me talk before on the podcast, if you've been listening to for a while, that I keep a messy desktop, both physical and on my computer. I can look at my computer, my iMac right now, and there's files and folders all over my desktop. They're all arranged in a certain order. I know what everything is. It's not just haphazard. I know what's there. But there's probably, I don't know, 50, 60 icons and folders on my desktop right now. Well, I'm not the only one that does that. Lots of people do. Even if they're organized, sometimes they would have a structure. They would have along the right-hand side, the left-hand side, a whole bunch of folders with different things in them. So what I would do is I would go take a screenshot of their entire desktop. Then I would take all their folders, put them into one folder. And back then you were able to go in, and I'm sure you can still do it now. I just haven't done it in so long. Actually, I know you can do it now, but you can change the icon. So if it was a folder, you can change it up. And sometimes you can go in edit and actually create your own. So what I would do is I would delete the image that was the icon part and I would make it one pixel and I would make it the similar color to the background. Then I would change the name. So whatever it is, untitled folder or whatever, if I created a new folder, it would be untitled folder. I would make that title just something like a period or the letter I, something really small. Then I would put everything that was on the desktop into that one folder. And I would put it somewhere on the desktop, like maybe in the bottom left-hand corner. So uh, it it wouldn't be seen. Like I can even hide it a little bit. So the wording would be off the screen and it would just be the, the one pixel from the icon. And then that screen capture that I took of their desktop with all their icons and everything, I would replace their desktop image with that. So now the actual background, their desktop background image was an image of their desktop with all the icons and all the folders there, but it was all an image. So it didn't matter what they did. They couldn't click on it. And I remember the first time I did that to somebody, she must have spent a good 20 minutes trying to click on things, trying to highlight things, couldn't get it. 
then she would restart her computer and it would come back and try it again. And she just didn't know what was going on. And it took forever for her to figure out, or I don't even know if she did. I think eventually, just so she would get back to work, I had to show her what I had done, that I had actually changed her background image to look just like her desktop. And uh, I actually used that a couple of times over the years. I don't know, Dan, if you're listening, Dan is, is uh, an old friend of mine. I, I believe he listens to the podcast. Dan, if, if you're listening, I think I actually pulled this one on you at one point while you were working at the print shop with me. But that was a good one. And I used that. I remember the first time I used it was on an April Fool's Day. And then I used it a few times over the years afterwards. Always like long time in between. And that brings me to probably the best one I ever did. And this was an April Fool's joke. And what I did is I had gone in and taken a screen capture of everybody's desktop. And then in Photoshop, I had created a, you know, those operating system, the Mac OS, whenever there's something uh, pop up in the middle, like a warning box that pops up. Well, I had in Photoshop created one or I had taken one, made a screen capture of it, cropped it, and I changed the wording on it to read something. I don't remember the exact wording, but it was something like warning, proceeding with this option will result in deletion of hard drive. And then I had two buttons. One of them was a cancel button and one of them was a continue button. But the cancel button, I had grayed it out like you couldn't click on it. So the only button that was clickable was the continue button. Now, again, this is just an image on your desktop background. So it's nothing there. But what happened was I I was working on a project on this was an April Fool's Day. I was working on a project and everybody was getting up. It was time for lunch. They were leaving for lunch. And I said, well, I'm going to be a little bit late. I got to finish this. I'm going to take a later lunch. Well, of course, as soon as they left, I went and I replaced everybody's desktop with this, with this warning message. So it had their own, it looked like their own background image with this thing in the middle. And again, the options were cancel, but you couldn't because the cancel was grayed out or continue. But if you press continue, it was going to delete your hard drive. And then right before I I looked at the time, right before their time was, was done, I left and I I met them on the way back in. I says, okay, I'm going for lunch. And I left the building. I got in my car and I drove away. I had an hour for lunch. I took off. Now, here's the thing. I also did my own computer the same way. So when they got in and they saw this message on here, they checked. And of course they thought, oh, Mark was pulling a prank on us. But then they checked my computer and the message was on my computer as well. Now, I can tell you, this is the time before cell phones Otherwise, I can tell you my phone would have been blowing up at this point. I went for lunch and I came back. And when I came back, everybody was in a mad panic because nobody was doing anything. Now, yes, I was lucky that the management had a good sense of humor because technically everybody in the print shop lost an hour that day because while I was gone for lunch, nothing got done because everybody was afraid to do anything on their computer. A couple of them had tried just rebooting their computer by pressing the power button or pulling the plug and plugging it back in. But of course, that box was not an actual box. It was part of the background image. So as soon as they booted up their computer, it was there again and they were in a panic. But the thing is, is nobody had actually tried doing anything else on the computer. They hadn't tried opening up any other programs. They hadn't tried Uh, opening folders or or going to system preferences or anything. Nobody, they were all afraid that if they did something and they accidentally press continue, it would delete their hard drive. Now that was probably my, the best one. And that was closer to near the end when I was uh, getting ready to leave the, the print shop. And as I said, even though everybody there, including the people that weren't like, this was just the design department. So management up front, they were on windows computers. I didn't do anything to their computers. But everybody stopped what they were doing because of this mass panic of what was happening to the entire design department. And the the funny thing is, is nobody put two and two together that it was April Fool's Day. Or if they did, they never mentioned it to me after the fact. You know, there there had been some years where first thing in the morning we'd come in and people say, oh, Mark, what are you going to try pulling on us this year? But nobody had mentioned anything that time. And we had got to lunch hour and nothing had happened. So that was the best one I had pulled. And I've mentioned that to other people, and I know other people have actually tried it. They thought, oh, that was brilliant. I'm going to give that one a shot. And it was so much fun just to see the panic. And of course, when I told them what it was, everybody, even though they were all panicking, they all thought it was hilarious afterwards. And they all said they were going to get back at me, but they never did. But if they would have simply just tried to highlight it or do anything, or even if they would have opened up a folder and put it in front, they would have realized something's up because the folder was in front of this warning, which usually a warning like that would be in front of everything. 
And usually when something like that popped up on the old Macs, you couldn't do anything else. So just the fact that you were able to open a folder should have given it away, but nobody even tried to do anything for fear that whatever they did might inadvertently delete their hard drive. So anyways, that's what I wanted to share with you today. You might think, ah, oh, Mark, that's pretty lame. I thought this was going to be funny. Or you might think, oh man, those are great. I have to try those. Whatever. It's just, as I said, when I saw that this was going to be April Fool's when this episode came out, I said, instead of doing a normal episode, why don't I just have a little bit of fun, share some memories, reminisce a little bit about my days at the print shop and some of the things that I pulled off, and hopefully liven up your day a little bit. Now, I would like to put out this opportunity. I don't get a lot of comments on the website for these podcast episodes. Although this week I did get three, which was very out of the the normal. I I normally only get one every, every few weeks or that, but I would love to get them for this episode. So if you visit resourcefuldesigner.com slash episode 158, please let me know what is the best design-related practical joke you've ever pulled off or that you've ever been the recipient of. I would really like to know. So please, once again, visit resourcefuldesigner.com slash episode 158 and leave a comment. Now, please be sure to tell your friends about the show. If this is your first time listening and you've made it this far, Of course, this is not the episode you want to share with everybody. You want to look, listen to some of the previous episodes where I do share a lot of advice about running a graphic design business. Those are the ones that your colleagues and your other design friends will want to know more about. And they can find the episodes anywhere podcasts can be found, including on Spotify. Or if they don't know how to subscribe to a podcast there, just have them download the Resourceful Designer app, whether they're on iOS or Android, and they can listen to all the episodes there. Now, for the record, Jar Jar Binks is not my favorite Star Wars character. That was an April Fool's joke. No, my favorite character from Star Wars is definitely the Porgs. I am Mark DeCote, wishing you all the best with your design business and reminding you to stay on your guard. Today is April Fool's after all. Thanks for listening to the Resourceful Designer Podcast at resourcefuldesigner.com.